All right, welcome all to the second year analytical chemistry tutorial for Chem 2302 and 2303. This tutorial is on how to fill out an analysis report. So let's start by taking a look at uh, the data that would have been collected. Uh, I have it here in this spreadsheet. This is using data that would have been collected during uh, an experiment in Chem 2303. Um, and if we take a look at this image here, we can see what was done in that uh, experiment. We took an iron tablet. It was digested. Uh, the digestion solution was transferred quantitatively to a 200 fill, 250 mil volumetric flask made up to the mark. Uh, and then a small amount of that one mil was transferred to uh, 300 mil flasks, which resulted in the three unknown measurements that we have here. I've already set up this spreadsheet with some uh, titles and stuff like that just to make this tutorial to go faster. Uh, but we can see here that we have our standard data uh, right in here. We have our the readings of our standards and the readings of our unknowns. So now what we can do is we can we'll need to average the unknown values or the standard values sorry to be able to uh, analyze and generate a calibration curve so i'm just going to use the uh, average function up here by selecting all the cells here plus all the spare cells and by clicking average we can see that each one of these calculates the associated average of that row so we get our various different cells and you can see the formula up here. So what we can now do is we can select our known X's and our known Y's. We can go to insert uh, scatter plots because that's what we're looking for and we want a scatter plot. We have the graph here. I'm just going to move it up and out of the way so it's not there. We can see our graph. We can put the uh, add the trend line to it. It's going to be a uh, linear trend line. We would like to, uh, we don't want to do anything. We don't want to set the intercept. Uh, we would like to display the equation on the chart and the R squared value as well. So that's all we need to do there. So we've got that information there. Now that we've got our calibration chart, I'm not going to take the time to clean this up by putting in a proper title uh, for the chart and axi titles and stuff like that. You'll need to do that. I'm just trying to do this to make sure that the uh, tutorial goes as quick as possible. So the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get the output to the Linus table here. So I'm going to select all six cells and I'm going to start by typing equals Linus and I'm going to open a bracket. We can see down here that it's showing me what needs to be put in to this down here. Also, if I come up to here and I click this insert function button, I'll get the uh, functions argument window in which I can select uh, the arguments for this. So I'll use the window to do this. So I want the known Y's. So these are the known Y's. I want the known X's. These are the known X's. And then for the constants, oh, known X's. Sorry, I just have this backwards. That's the known X's. And then we need to change the uh, known Y's. There we go. All right, so we've got our known X's and our known Y's. Known Y's, known X's, yep, that stuff's right. Then our constant is just, uh, we're just answering with a logical, so we can answer true and, or false or one and zero. And then for that one, we want one as well. Now what we're going to do, you can't see me do this, but I'm going to hold down the shift and control key while I click OK. That will calculate the entire array here. And you can see that it's all, all calculated. And we can see that the slope matches what's on the diagram. So does the intercept. We now have the error on the slope, the error on the uncertainty. We have our R squared value, which again is the same here. And our intercept, uh, our S of Y value. It's always just a good idea to check this against the chart to make sure that you got your X and Y values put into Linus properly. Now that we have our Linus function, we can come down here and use our y equals mx plus b uh, value equation to calculate the concentration of this x solution. So to do this, I'm going to type in equals 
I'm going to open the brackets because it's y minus b divided by m. So I'm going to select my y value. Then I'm going to go minus the b value, close the bracket, and divide by the m value. So that calculation worked just fine. Now, with this calculation selection, if I go up here to the uh, formula bar and I put in the absolute cell references, which is dollar signs, on the slope and the intercept cells, and I click enter, that changes nothing to the calculation, but what that allows me to do is copy and paste this equation. And these, these two equations now use these values and these two. So we now have our y equals mx plus b done. Now we need to calculate our s of x. And as you can remember from previous discussions in this lab, this is what s of x looks like. There's a complete breakdown here of what all the different variables are that go into this equation. So I will actually do that in the spreadsheet here. So we have um, x bar and y bar. So y bar is just the average of all the y components that go into the calibration curve, again, like that. X bar is, again, the average. And I'm just calculating the average of the x components. There we go. That's good. K is the number of replicated measurements of the unknown. So we measured the unknown three times. <clears throat> and then N is the number of data points that make up our calibration curve. So what we can do here is we just got one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six things selected. So we know we have six data points that make up our calibration curve. The summation here, what we're going to do is we're going to come up here. We're going to go equals brackets. Uh, we want the X minus the mean value. And then we're going to want to square it. So that's all the stuff that we need to do it here. And then I'm going to come up here. And again, I'm going to add the absolute cell referencing to the X bar value. And then I can just copy and paste that value down like that. So now that we have um, that done, we can then just come here and get the summation by using the sum function and selecting these six and away we go. So we now have in our spreadsheet, all the things that we need in order to calculate the square root of sum of squares formula. Now I'm going to just minimize this window for a second and I'm going to reorganize uh, myself here just so that we can see the formula while I type this in and I can see everything else that we need uh, to do this. Oop, sorry, live stuff is always fun. All right, so now I think that should get me everything that I need. Okay, so to do y equal or to do the s of x calculation, it's a bit of a thing. So let's start typing this out. We're going to go equals and we're going to open brackets and we're going to get the s of y value, which is there. And we're going to divide it by the absolute value of m. You might ask if m is always po already positive, why should I use the absolute function? It's just to make sure good habit to get into to make sure that we're always typing in the formula as required and there's no issue. And now we're going to multiply that and we're going to get the square root function. We're going to open a bracket and then we're going to open another bracket and we're going to put in one divided by our K value, close, plus open another bracket, one divided by the N value, close bracket, plus now this is where it gets a little screwy because we got to open brackets and close brackets as we go along. So let's see if we can get the uh, next part of the equation, the minus y minus y bar divided by that done up. So it's a bracket, open a bracket, open another bracket. We take our y value, we minus the y bar value. We close the bracket and we're going to square that. We should actually put another bracket there, which means I'm going to have to come up to here now to type in because I need to change everything just to keep my brackets straight. Um, don't worry if you mess up your brackets, Excel will correct your brackets for you if you need to. So this is going to be bracket. I'm going to open a second bracket. 
we're going to take our slope value again. We're going to square it, which is the hat square button, close it, multiply it by, then we need the summation. So we can close that, close that bracket, close that bracket, close that bracket, which should make everything hunky-dory. We hit enter and there's our calculated uncertainty. S of X calculation. Now, if we come back into this again and go in and add in all the um, absolute cell references to everything but the A20, because that's the one value we want to change. So I don't want to add absolute cell references to that, but everything else, we just do this quickly like that. There we go. And then we go copy and paste that calculation now changes and you can see right here just above the cursor or just below the cursor let's just do the cursor like that so just above the cursor you can see as i as i arrow down that is the only value that changes all right so now we have our uh we have our y value and our s of y value so now what we need to do is account for the dilutions that were done. So that's going to be using our good old friend C1V1 equals C2V2. So we have our C2, we want to get it. Here are our V1s and our V2s. So we can figure that out. So if we use C1V1 equals C2V2, rearrange and solve for uh, C2, we can go equals brackets C1 times C2. Oh, sorry. Thank you. I, uh, okay. I have to, I forgot to shift. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me do that again. Bracket that multiply by that, close the brackets and divide by that. So again, we can see that it changes and we can go ahead and put in the absolute cell references. Uh, oops, I did that wrong. Um, so C1, uh, we should actually change the D24 to that value there, the B20. I'm sorry, this uses the calculation here to just get it right. And then what I can do with this one, again, add the absolute cell references to the two volumes. So we just stick those in there like that. And again, we can copy and paste each one of these. Now, let me, we now need to do the uncertainty because we need to propagate uncertainty through this calculation. So if we come back to here, we can see this is the uncertainty calculation that we're going to use, the square root of sum of squares formula. So we have them here. And so what we can do is we can come back and we can start typing in this formula. So we're going to go equals, uh, and we're going to take this value. We're going to multiply it by the square root, open, open another bracket. Now what we need to do is we can start by taking the S of X value, dividing it by the X value here, squaring it, adding it, opening another bracket. And now what we need to do is account for the two uncertainties on these images that I need here. So what I need to get off of it is the tolerance for a 100 mil volumetric flask, which is 0.08 and the tolerances for a one mil transfer pipette, which is 0 0.006. So let's put those in. So we've got the um, 0 0.08 divided by that value and then squaring it and then adding the 0 0.0006 divided by that value Square it, close that bracket, which closes the square root, and away we go. So we now have that calculation done. So again, if we come through here and change, set these two um, locked values, then we can do that. One of the other things that you could do with this is if you put in 
the uncertainties on these two volumes under uh, the values here, then this spreadsheet would become a little bit more uh, reusable and reprogrammable because we just would change that to that cell reference and, oh, and we would give it the absolute cell values that we want. Um, and then for this one, we can delete that one and give it that cell and then put the absolute cell references on it as well. And there we go, we get copied. So let's just check and make sure that we've got those values right. Uh, oh, only two zeros, not three. So it's 0 0.006. So corrects that. And the other one is 0 0.08. Yep, so we got that right. So now what we can do is we can take this formula and go copy, paste, paste. And now we're done. So if we go back to our diagram here, we determined what the concentration of this was. This gives us the, this is where the X is in this one. Then we went back to the 250 mil. And now we need to backtrack to the pill because we need to report how much iron is in the pill. So we now know the concentration of iron in this 250 mil uh, tablet. So now we just need to uh, multiply it by uh, and resolve the units here to convert this to 250, how much iron is in that 250 mil flask as a um, uh, milligrams of iron, because we can make the assumption, if we go back to this image, that any iron in this flask had to come from this tablet. So any iron present in here is the iron that was in the tablet. So if we take this now, and we go equals, we take this number, we uh, multiply it, sorry, multiply it by 250 and divide it by 100. This is because we want to find the volume of the 200. We're dividing it by the 100 to account for the 100 mils that was here. So what we get is uh, we get 37.48 mils or milligrams, and then we can copy and paste that down. Uh, and then we just need to account for the uncertainty uh, again, which is going to be a square root of sum of squares formula. So we just go equals, we're going to take our value, multiply it by the square root, open a bracket. So we're going to start off with the things that we used in this. So we're opening another bracket, the uncertainty of the concentration, divided by the concentration, squared, plus open another bracket. Then we need to come back to our diagram here. So the uncertainty on the 250 is 0.12. So we can go 0 0.12 divided by 250, close the brackets, square it. Then we have to add the uncertainty on the 100 mils. So again, we have that. It's the 0 0.08 divided by 100 close the brackets, square it, close the square root, and we can hit enter. And then we can just copy and paste this equation. Now that we're at the final point, we know what the tablet is. All we have to do is take the average of these values and the standard deviation of those values. So we can go STDV and we select the values and we close it. So in these six tables, we now have the information we need to fill in our analysis report form. So if I come to the analysis report form, I've got the blank one here. I can stick in my name. Uh, I can should also add in a student number here as well. It's always a good thing to do. We can add the date, the lab section. Let's just say I'm in A1. Sample number is always an important thing to add. So that was the sample number. Experiment, this was experiment number one. Uh, determination of iron in vitamin. All right, so we can do that. Um, actually, it looks like we can just uh, move all that down to here and delete 
that stuff. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. There we go. All right, so then we have our determinations. So we can uh, minimize this and uh, minimize this one so that we can uh, see our results here. I'm just going to move my windows around so I can see everything, so I can type it in. So the first reading is 37.48. The next reading is 37.48. Next reading is 36.62. And the mean is 37.20. Then we need to cal calculate the... Um, we need to put in the uncertainties. So we can just add those in as they were calculated. And then just need to get the mean. So the mean was 0 0.49. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Now, something that you can um, see here is my spreadsheet carried a lot of expert decimal places all the way along until I got to this stage where it automatically um, limited itself to two decimal places. And two decimal places is the uncertainty that I feel or the level of significant figures that I feel are comfortable with this experiment. Um, and making sure that all your uh, readings and uncertainties have the same significant figures. Then here for the precision calculation, you can show, uh, you can show it. So we actually have to type out what the precision calculation is for the standard deviation. You just uh, type in um, uh, what is the standard deviation formula? Do, do. You could write, you just write in the standard deviation formula. Uh, formula. And what the result was, 0 0.92. Conclusion, you can say the vitamin tablet um, uh, 11.2 was found to have 37.20. And then let me just maximize this window. We come into insert, we can get our symbols, we can get the plus or minus symbol, uh, 0 0.49 milligrams of iron. All right, and then the last thing in here is the uh, comparison comparison to regulatory values. So what we need to do here is we need to look up iron. So if we go to Google, we intake limit. Let's try that and see what we get. Ah, here we go. Uh, so that's Alberta. Let's see. Uh, iron summarily for prenatals, so that's not what we're looking for. Dietary reference intake tables, that sounds like what we're looking for. All right, uh, values for elements, that looks like what we're looking for. Do, 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 do. Reference values for elements, let's go there. Oh, hey, look at this. Arsenic, calcium, boron, fluoride. All right. Uh, magnesium. Oh, iron. Here we are. Iron. So let's go with uh, the regulatory le, le, uh, most often area of the population. So let's go with 31 to 50 years old. The upper limit here is listed as 45. Uh, in females, it's listed as the same. So let's go with that value. So what we're going to want is the uh, title of this. I am getting notifications. I'll just close that and we go, we're going to copy that. We're going to come back to this document and we're going to paste in here that it was the dietary reference intake. Uh, and we can call it tables and it would be the elements is where we found it. Elements. And then um, we want to put in um, come back to here and we want to grab the uh, link. So we go copy 
and we paste the option here. This is the link. And then we say it was accessed. It is October 7, 2020. All right. So that gives us the reference for this. And now we can, now we can type in here something that uh, is like, um, according to Health Canada, Canada, there we go. The, um, the upper limit for uh, dietary iron in males and females, oh, overactive shift key finger, females aged 31 to 50 is 45 milligrams of iron. Therefore, let's just clean this up. Boop, boop. Therefore, the pill is safe to consume. All right, so that is good and that is all. So once this is done, as it is here, all you would need to do with this is to uh, finish off uh, the, print this out, write some sample calculations on the back, and then you're ready to submit it.